What we're trying to do is inspire our generation to care again, to pay attention again, to participate, to be involved, to play our role. Democracy is a government of the people with powers exercised either directly or through their elected representatives. It is a system of government where everyone has just as much power as the other. One of the reasons democracy is widely appreciated is that it provides a natural environment for the protection and effective realization of human rights. If popular participation is the mark of democracy, we can argue that no matter the name it was given, some pre-colonial African nations were democratic. In the pre-colonial African kingdoms of Mosi, Ghana, Mali and Songhai, they practiced a form of governance that allowed the people to be actively involved. With colonialism came modern day democracy and while it has served as a relief for people in areas that were once under the autocratic rule of monarchical dictators, some have argued that it is a system with many pitfalls. Some of them being the fact that societies have to rely on the masses to make the right decisions when it comes to electing leaders and voting at referendums. An even bigger problem is with the lack of trust in the system. We spoke to Professor David Awurawo, who lectures in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, on the nature of democracy among post-colonial governments in Africa. In post-colonial Africa, we can actually identify three phases in the you know, uh, political evolution of the continent. In the immediate post-independence period, it was the democratic system that reflected the different types of government that the mother countries, that is the countries that colonized different you know, African territories, practiced. For instance, in Nigeria, it was the you know, Westminster model of parliamentary democracy. The same thing in Ghana and some other countries colonized by Britain. In the former French colonies, it was you know, the French type where you had the president and then you had the prime minister, the president being, you know, uh, the head of government and all. But it, it's, it's hard, we describe them as democratic because it, it was it had embedded in it the people going to elect their representatives. But from as early as, you know, of course, because this took place from the 1950s and then the early 1960s. But from as early as 1963, we began to experience military coups across Africa, you know, Togo, and then Ghana, Nigeria, and then almost the entire continent experienced one form of military dictatorship or the other. That went on for some two decades. And then, you know, a wave of democracy began to sweep across Africa again, you know, in the 80s. Uh, we now had a mixture of military gov uh, you know, governments side by side, you know, um, democratic across, civilian governments across Africa. Now, almost the entire continent is governed by, you know, uh, uh, people elected by, you know, uh, their representatives. Currently, the only African country that has an absolute monarch is Eswatini, a kingdom currently undergoing democratization. The other countries, Morocco and Lesotho, are constitutional monarchies. Going by the Economic Intelligence Unit's Democracy Index, the level of freedom and political participation enjoyed in some African countries differ greatly from others. But in principle, most African countries are democratic. The area where um, a lot of you know, improvements still needs to be done is the people's capacity to continue to insist on, um, you know, on good governance, on accountability from the... Because democracy is not just about electing leaders. What we have found, what we have seen, the major issue has been that once the people elect their leaders, they go and relax until the next election. And, you know, it's the nature of humans. When they know they can do things without catastrophic consequences for the negative things they do, they pursue that path. So how can we get involved? Read about your history and consciously seek opportunities to be informed about your leaders and the measures that have been put in place to hold them accountable. It is okay to be a dissatisfied Democrat. Run for elective office if you can. Support credible candidates and be ready to demand good governance from your leaders. A government where the people participate, the people are part of the governing process, 
where the structure is inclusive is always the best.